Okay, here we have a very interesting problem. Um, it looks like a bunch of stuff going on here, and there actually is. Um, but we're going to use all of the things that we've learned about positive and negative numbers in order to simplify this. Now, any time that you have more than one operation going on, remember that we have to follow order of operations. That's going to tell us which to do first and which to do second. Now, I've um, highlighted here, not highlighted, but accentuated um, these absolute value bars here because I want to make sure that we realize that there is an absolute value in this problem. Okay, we have to do things in the proper order. Order of operations says we do parentheses and grouping symbols first. So that tells us that we're going to have to do what's inside this absolute value first before we can do anything else. So I'm just going to do the negative 4 times the negative 3. Now, before I get to there, I'm going to start recopying the rest of the problem. So we have 8 times negative 1 minus, and then my absolute value, negative 4 times negative 3. 4 times 3 would be 12, and because the signs are the same, it will be positive. Now I'm recopying everything else. Sometimes it's really nice to be very, very clear what you're doing and just do one thing at a time. Now we still have to do parentheses and grouping symbols. We've not cleaned up this absolute value, so we're going to do that next. So again, I'm recopying everything else that I'm not using. 8 times negative 1 minus the absolute value of 12 is the distance from 0 to 12, which would be 12 units. And then I'm recopying also this denominator. All right, we've taken care of the parentheses. Even though we have parentheses here, there's really not anything to do inside them. Um, we don't have any exponents, which would be next. So now we're down to our multiplication and division. Well, we have uh, this multiplication here, and sort of, this right here is a multiplication also. Um, it's almost as if we are doing negative 1 times negative 1. That's really what's happening when we say the opposite of negative 1. Another way we could look at it is we've seen that this double negative makes a positive in problems that we've done before. Okay, I'm going to bring this up over here for my answer. 8 times negative 1. 8 times 1 would be 8. And because the signs are different, the answer is negative. And then we have minus 12, just recopying everything else, over negative 6. This double negative here makes a positive, so that's a positive 1. Now, we don't have any more multiplication on the numerator or the denominator, but we still need to put these, the numerator together as a single item and the denominator together as a single item before we do the division. It's almost as if these are um, sort of grouping symbols by themselves. But now this says a negative 8 and a negative 12. We're not multiplying these. Technically, we're doing the addition subtraction rules. So we need to switch gears and go back to those rules. Remember, if the signs were the same, we add and keep the sign. So negative 8 and negative 12, those are the same sign. So we would add, which would be 20, and keep the same sign, which is negative. Divided by, now here on the bottom, we have negative 6 and a positive 1. Our signs are different. So the rule says we subtract, which would be 5, and we keep the sign of the largest number. 6 is bigger than 1, so the sign will stay as negative. Now we have a division problem. We have negative 20 divided by negative 5. So we just do the division. 20 divided by 5 would be 4. And because the signs are the same, the answer is positive. You absolutely have to get down pat the rules for addition subtraction and then the rules for multiplication division. Once you get those down pat, you can do multiple, multiple operations in the problem.